We be rolling, yo. We're not waiting for the music? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to. No, I don't care. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't either. So, where are we at? We are in the main square of the cathedral in Santiago de Compostela, Spain. Yes. And how long did it take us to get here? How, like how many hiking days or just all together? Uh, I don't all, know how long all together. Yeah, I don't know how long all together either. It's 49 how about, hiking days. Yeah, and I walked 47 of those because I had to take public transit two of those days from being injured and sick. Yeah. So, but we made it. We sure did. <laughs> and we are just about to head off tomorrow, tomorrow morning, morning to go meet my mother and father in Barcelona. Barcelona. Sorry, Barcelona. Better. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's been quite the crazy journey thus far and with that being said we really haven't found the time to record one of these in a little bit even now I am fucking exhausted (laughs) yeah so it's kind of crazy like Camino life and brain operate entirely on a different plane I feel Do you agree? Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, even while we speak, I still feel that kind of delirium that probably came across pretty well in the last podcast. Definitely. Yeah. And since that last... That was about a month ago, I think. I think it was, close to a month ago. Give or take. It's fucking crazy. And I think with that uh, last podcast... We were sitting in a hammock. We had maybe been with a couple of the Camino Pals that we had made for like a couple nights, two or three nights maybe. It had been a little while. Point. Yeah, not not longer than a week though. Mm. I think we were all pretty fresh with getting to know each other. And I think at the time we were experiencing some... Uh, Stomach issues, <laughs> I would say, with uh, having been drinking the tap water for a little while. I know that night I was, um, yeah, not feeling so hot. And I remember a girl from Germany that we had met, Elisa, was up all night throwing up. And then, like, the following day, Sam was sick. And I think everybody was had like a case of the stomach illness for a while of like the runs or the throw ups for or both huh? or both or both for uh, one point or another except for I think Yana was the only one who didn't experience that lucky lady (laughs) but yeah that kind of took a toll I would say it made me have to bus out of Gihon Um, which was, yeah, one of the reasons for my rest day. And then I think after that, we kind of kept booking or scheduling with the same crew for a little ways. So it was like almost like we were slowly gaining this Camino crew or family, if you will. Which was kind of nice. You think? Gaining Camino crew? It was becoming a Camino crew. Yeah, it was just more so becoming like a deeper connected crew. Yeah. It was the same people. Well, yeah. We weren't gaining anyone else. Okay, sorry for that choice of word. No, I was just confused. I just wanted to... Yeah. 
Sometimes the words that come out of my mouth aren't the words that I meant. So thanks for clarifying. What? All right. So moving on. Um, after that, <laughs> uh, we had continued through, was it? Oh my god, I'm trying to remain, remember the names of like the different kind of regions that we walked through. Do you remember those very well? Cantabria, Cantabria Asturias. Asturias. That's the one I was trying to remember. And then Galicia. Okay. So yeah, those were the three uh, regions of Spain that we were walking through. And I felt like they After each... After the Basque Country. Yeah. I felt like they each had their own kind of unique feel to them. Yeah. Which was pretty cool, seeing the distinctions between the three. And what was your favorite out of the three? Galicia, of always. Galicia, yeah. They did uh, definitely Galicia. feel different than the rest. They're all unique in their own way. Yeah. But I just love Galicia. Yeah, I agree. There's just something about the eucalyptus, the, like, forest groves and the mountains. Very green. Super green. There's a lot of seafood. Yeah. It just feels uh, lush. Do you like that word? Do you like that word? I don't know. Kind of okay. felt like it described it all right. Um... How do you feel about being back in this square right now? Right now? Yeah. I don't know. I'm fine. It's a, It's not like a foreign place anymore. It's comfortable. It's familiar. Yeah. But what does this place make you feel? It varies. I don't know. Yeah. It changes with... Like every time I come here, sometimes I get here and I can't wait to leave. Sometimes I could be here all day. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I hate it. Sometimes I love it. Why would you hate it here? I shouldn't say I hate it. Yeah, that's sometimes a strong just, word. Sometimes I just don't care to be here. Yeah. All oh, the music. Cue music. <laughs> Now I like it. Now you love it. Now it's better. Um, yeah. For me, I feel like it always kind of has this somewhat of an excited air about it. Excited and joyous. Celebratory. Yeah. Just because it's somewhere where so many people, like, wait to get to. And think about arriving here in this square in front of this cool cathedral being reunited with friends that they've met before or maybe just somebody who they like walked with for 10 minutes but made a connection with so I kind of I don't know I like it I like this square and you see the different packs of pilgrims arrive and you just kind of like wonder about their journey and how it was and it just kind of feels like i don't know the ending of adventures but kind of like the beginning of friendships because that's kind of how it felt like for me on a lot of the caminos yeah yeah oh and the lights just turned on Yes, it's a <laughs> nice and cool evening. The sun is just set. Lights are turning on. It's not dark yet. It's mm -mm. like dusk. Yeah. There's a lot of students about. How do you know there's students? Well, they look like youth, youthful people, like teenagers or college kids. Was it Thursday? Yep. It's a school night. Mm. 
I don't know if it matters in Spain. I, I think don't they know kinda what Spain's like schedule is. Yeah, their schedules are different than us. <laughs> what was one thing about your Camino that you felt like was different from your other Caminos? It this can be one? Yeah, it can be either the North Route or the Portuguese one that we just walked. Well, the North Route, for one, uh, it was more demanding, I guess, physically, mm-hmm. than any of the other ones. The Portuguese... I don't know. For me, it was kind of stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Care to elaborate? It was just different. I don't know why I tend to do this to myself, but it's like I expect certain things. I think because I'd done it before, and it was very different, being that the first time we did it was early April, and this time it was uh, late September. Mm Mm-hmm. So, obviously, it's going to look completely different, in a sense. I mean, it was familiar, but different. Um, And then I think because we had walked it before in April, everything was very green. But before we walked it this time, we had just done the North Route, which is also known as the Green Route. So, that was extra green. So I think the contrast of that being here also in like harvest season when it's not as green anyway, it just looked less lush. Yeah. Um, And very different than what I was expecting, but it's not like that was a disappointment. It's just something that kind of, I want to say, caught me off guard. Did it stress you out? That didn't stress me out, no. What stressed you out? Uh, just uh, the pace of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was the meeting of new people and that uh, we were weathered pilgrims by that point and some people were just starting. And I was used to starting early. I don't like starting late. I like starting early and getting done with a decent amount of time left in the day to do stuff. Yeah. Versus starting at like 9 or 9.30 in the morning when it's already hot. I. To me, it's just, it's it's harder. It's more difficult. I don't enjoy it as much. And that day after day for a bit was stressing me out to where I was eventually, I just stated my needs and that I just needed to start earlier. So I just started doing that and it was better. Although I was a bit more of a loner at that point then, but. Yeah. It's a bit of give and take. Yeah, for sure. That's kind of how I felt with the Portuguese way, for sure, was that it was just kind of... It felt like a lot of compromise, which isn't really a bad thing, but it's... It's stressful, though. Yeah, it's slightly stressful, especially when you are very used to a routine, day in, day out, you find what works for you and you kind of find what works and your then you rhythm kind of have to and your daily system change it. Your, yeah yeah but i mean that being said there was kind of like the added gift of being able to walk with my dad and our friend Cassie which was pretty awesome which was awesome yeah and they surprised the hell out of me with how tough the two of them are yeah i was impressed myself i was super impressed like Cassie had a couple of pretty bad blisters, like within the few, er, within the first few days, and uh, I kind of showed her how to treat them. And then after, you know, she kind of figured out how to deal with them herself. Uh, she just kind of kept trooping along, and uh, yeah, they were both pretty, pretty badass. Yeah, they adapted really well. It was funny. There was a moment where I said, I have to walk my own pace. I have to speed up or I'm just, like, hurting myself. Yeah. So I started going my pace. And it was a good, like, 30, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I stopped to take a photo of this house. Yeah. And then I hear Cassie right behind me go, oh, this place is crazy. And I was like, what are you doing right behind me? (laughs) 
Yeah. It's like I didn't know, you know, I didn't know she was behind me th- that close the whole time yeah. and that she was keeping pace. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Where the fuck do I know that guy from? That is He's weird. been around. But like on this Camino? Yeah. Oh, but the yeah. North I've seen him right? downtown or downtown. Not the Portuguese. I think it was the Portuguese. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. That was weird. I know I've seen him a number of times. That's another weird thing about this square is that you'll see familiar faces and then you're like, where do I know them from? Yeah. Um, Was it from yesterday or was it from five weeks ago? Yeah, it's true. It's just fucking weird. Yeah. It's kind of time warpy. It is very time warpy, especially the, the Camino itself is time warpy. It is. You know? There's no other word for it but time warpy. But, yeah, so, I mean, the Portuguese was amazing and a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to have with my dad and Cassie and the two of us and just, you know, I don't know. I loved that it was harvest season and we got to see everybody out, like, harvesting grapes and, you know... I don't know, that whole aspect of it, because we didn't see that before. No, everything was was just starting to blossom and bloom and come back to life from the winter season. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was very opposite. Yeah. Just, yeah. I liked it. Yeah, it was cool. But I would have to say that, yeah, the north route was something special. Yeah. They're all something special in their own way. It's very true. But for us... The north route was this time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot of that um, has to do with kind of the closeness and the bonds that you make with that Camino family that you create. A lot of it does go, yeah, it stems to the connections you make. Yeah, for sure. And so the Camino crew that we had were two gals from Germany um, actually, technically, three gals from Germany. Uh, one, her name is Jana, but she lives in Vienna. And then the other one is named Kate. And she's from... Her and Elisa is the other one. Uh, they're from northern Germany, I believe, near Hamburg somewhere? I'm going to have to ask them again where exactly they're from, but I think it's in the north of Germany. And then a guy named Sam from Manchester, England. Sam. Oh, oh Sam. Sam. And uh, yeah, we just grew really close with these four individuals. It was an awesome crew. And it was a really awesome crew. So much fun. Yeah, and I just feel honored that we were able to, you know, share our Camino with them and be able to get to know them better and experience like what felt like a really cool kind of adventure with them all. Yeah. And we all kind of went through our hardships and uh, helped each other out when we needed it. You know, Yana's feet, her heels specifically, blistered up for a good portion of the whole way, and I had to kind of help her with that because she's afraid of needles. Yeah. And then uh, Sam, he had some issues with his feet, and lost a little toenail had to like pull it off himself which we all watched (laughs) and then uh kate she had some issues with her leg and uh even though elisa had her feet like almost taped the entire time she she held up pretty well she held up really well and then she was really fast she was fast and when she she's got long legs though too so when she took that tape off her feet, her feet looked like the, like nothing had touched them. It was so bizarre. Probably because they were just super taped up. <laughs> they were like mummy feet. And when she took them off, it looked like she had just had like a pedicure. It's weird. But it was kind of cool. So, noted for next Camino. Maybe I'll just keep my feet mummied all the, all the time. That's what my feet looked like for the first like two yeah. weeks. Now my feet are dry as fuck, gross little raisin feet. Well, that's normal. 
What? <laughs> yeah, so that was pretty cool getting to know all of them. And we did end up having to separate from Kate and Elisa at one point because they had a little bit more time than we did. So they took one day and made it a shorter day. And so we kind of missed out on like a week of walking with them. And we're, we're just walking with Sam. Oh my little God, that dog barky, is going crazy. shrill little dog. He is just running in circles, barking. Oh my God. Go away. Um, yeah, so we ended up just walking with Sam and Yana for a while, so kind of became this foursome bunch, which was pretty awesome. And It's a good number for me to manage personally myself as well. True. Me too. If but. it was like a group of eight, it wouldn't have been the same for me. Yeah. But four for me is yeah. an ideal number yeah, for I me felt. to like socially and yeah. interactively manage. Mm-hmm. I felt like we were able to really get to know both Sam and Yana pretty well. Yeah. And, and uh, we had to say bye to Sam here in Santiago when we made it. Yeah. Um, which it was really cool. I think it was probably one of my most memorable or favorite uh, experiences walking into Santiago, into this square specifically, was when we had walked in with Yana and met Sam. And I think that was probably one of the only times that it was like our whole crew arrived at the same time. Almost. Sam made it first and yeah. sent you a well, photo as we were, you know, five, ten <laughs> yeah. minutes away. But it was my favorite entryway into the square yeah. of Santiago, yeah, of all my sure. Caminos. Same. Hands down. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. The excitement was building. When we made it here, it was, you know, pretty... It was just fun. Yeah, it was fun. That a lot it of was fun. just a fun Camino, that one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but yeah, Sam was meeting his girlfriend here, Charlotte, and we got to meet her and kind of take him out and have really good tapas that night, and, uh, followed by some drinks and just chatting. Just a typical celebration. Yeah. Of Nothing too crazy or anything, but no, yeah. No, not like other times. No. <laughs> uh, especially because I'm it not It was drinking. memorable. It was very memorable. But yeah, unfortunately we had to say bye to both of them and uh but we did decide to can continue on walking to Finisterre with Yana and so we had three extra days of walking to the coast with her which was awesome yeah we were luckily enough able to squeeze into our schedule yeah just but barely like we barely. had to work it out and Luckily, it worked out. I think we had to pull some extra bigger, <laughs> extra bigger, some extra big days. Yeah, we did. Uh, in order to make that possible. Yeah, we did. Uh, for the end of the North Route, mm -hmm. but we did, and it all worked out really well. Oh, yeah. I would say the walk into Finisterre that day is probably one of my favorite walking days of all my Caminos. That might have been one of them. That was definitely, if not... My biggest one, one of them, for yeah. sure. It was and we walked 40K that day. You said it before. I don't know why you're squinting. And 35? I don't know. Sure, no, because the, to the lighthouse and back was an extra 6K. Oh, right. Yeah. So it was around 40K. It wasn't, like, all, you know, continuous, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that day in particular kind of stands out as being a very memorable one. Especially the... Once we got to Finisterre, where the beach kind of meets the city, we all took our shoes off and socks off and walked just barefoot. walked barefoot along the beach into Finisterre. Yeah. Which was pretty awesome. We were just like kind of putting around and looking at seashells and allowing the freezing cold water to wash up on our feet and kind of numb it. Great. Oh my God, it felt so good. And then the sand kind of like rubs the dead skin off of your feet yeah and then we made our way up to the lighthouse mm -hmm. and it was just a beautiful sunny day oh my god and we had stopped at a market on the way up there and picked up a bottle of wine so we were just 
and some snacks, I think, too. So we were mm -hmm. just kind of eating and drinking and enjoying the sunset and our accomplishment. And yeah. Well, you and Yana enjoyed the bottle of wine. Yeah. I'm still not drinking. But power to you guys because you split it amongst the two of you. It was pretty... It's just one bottle. No, I know. I'm saying you split it amongst the two of you. Yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I probably would have been rolling down those rocks if I would have had any of that. Yeah. Um, it was a really it was such special a, moment. Yeah. Super, super awesome day. And, uh, yeah, then we had the one night um, in Finisterre. We went to the beach, Sunset Beach. Or Hippie Beach. Or Hippie Beach. We didn't have a sunset, but... It was completely foggy, but it was, <laughs> was kind of cool in its own way as yeah. well. It was still pretty nice. We upheld certain traditions that once took place there before. If you've been there with us, you know what they are. I don't have to mention them here. <laughs> Again, it wasn't crazy. No, it wasn't. It was, but it was just a lot of fun. Moderation. Yeah. And then we met up with Kate and Elisa once again, and we're able to uh, hang out and, you know, share some memories and maybe some of us shed some tears. I won't mention who. <laughs> but, uh, no, it was a pretty emotional goodbye. And it's just hard saying bye to everybody because you really don't, don't know when you'll see them again or if you'll see them again, you know. You hope that you will. But there are some people who we've met on past Caminos who we've made certain connections with who we haven't seen since. Yeah. So, it all kind of stops abruptly. It does. In a way. You know it's going to come to an end and that it's that, but I don't know why it just sort of seemingly happens so fast still. Yeah. And it's like you can't really prepare yourself for it. I mean, you do kind of, I kind of remind myself of it the day before it ends and then the day of you know the last day kind of being like well this is the last whatever this is the last walk <laughs> just kind yeah. of slowly kind of preparing myself to let it all go um doesn't make it any easier because it's hard to say goodbye but yeah we had to uh Wake up the next morning, we went out to breakfast with Yana and said goodbye to her. And then we loaded ourselves onto a very crowded bus. Luckily enough. Luckily enough. Because it not was everyone a shit show. could fit on it. No. The thing was was that they sold tickets ahead of time, which we bought, but then they just allowed anybody to just board the bus and pay for the tickets on the bus. So the people that had the tickets already didn't necessarily mean that you got a seat on the bus. No. Which to me isn't fair. And it's well, not a very efficient no, system. Not efficient at all. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> so literally there's like a bus and a half load of people waiting outside this bus Kind Some of like are stressed out because yeah. they have a flight that leaves Santiago, which is where the bus is heading. Right. They have to make, and not everyone's going to get on no. the right, or on the bus. On the bus, yeah. The time they need to. So it was literally like a school of fish just being like shoved into this bus. And luckily enough, Carl's pretty good at pushing his way through a crowd, so we kind of just butted ourselves up to the front and pushed ourselves onto the bus which worked out um because we did also have to make a what was it planned at first a train a train the train yeah. from santiago to porto yeah. which in order to make that we had to catch this bus yeah we did and so once on the bus i look into my fanny pack and I see that my wallet is missing, which was not something I wanted to have happened. Or something I wanted to hear. No. So that was a neat little thing that we had to uh, figure out why and where 
and what to do. Um, yeah, so it's still a mystery. <laughs> but luckily I can cancel credit cards and my mom was going to be meeting us. So I just asked her if she could bring the new ones. So, and luckily I had no cash in there. So that was good. That's huge. Huge. Everything else can be replaced. Well, the it driver's a license hassle. is a little difficult. But you can replace it, but... But I can't. How? Yeah, I guess <laughs> not here, but, no. you know. Yeah. So. Um, but if cash is gone, it's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, so, um, yeah, that wasn't too fun, but kind of just rolled with the punches, knew that, you know, couldn't really do anything about it, and worrying was just doing more harm than good so uh luckily carl and my dad were able to spot me some cash and i can just pay him back once i get my cards and then we basically got to santiago from the bus and had kind of a stressful morning trying to find a cab because it wasn't stressful enough already (laughs) yeah right it's fucking weird not fun. It was kind of just a reminder that I don't like life outside of the Camino all that much. <laughs> I mean, I do, but it gets hectic, man. The Camino's pretty pretty easy. It's pretty simple. Pretty stress-free. I mean, besides the aches and pains you gotta deal with. Besides the aches and pains and being smelly. And being smelly, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we... Uh, We eventually ended up getting on a bus instead of a train and got down to Porto to meet my dad and our friend Cassie. And that was pretty cool. Reuniting with my dad and Cassie, who I hadn't seen the two of them in a while. Like over a month. So, that was good. And then we had one day... Oh my god, that yappy fucking dog again. Come, come, yappy. Um, and then we all had one day in Porto to kind of just roam around and explore. Should we stop it while that dog's going? What the fuck? Maybe you can't hear it. Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, we had one day to roam around Porto. And... Really? It's the same It is the same dog. dog, and it's just, like, running around in circles. And it's going to be coming right by us. It will. Oh, it's kind of cute, though. Hi, puppers. You're hanging <laughs> He's cute, It's a though. good thing he's cute. I know. He literally is just running in circles, <laughs> yapping. On one of those like extended so leashes. Like, he's so excited. Yeah, on the extended... Extended leashes. Jesus Christ, oh, wow. though. Wow. Why would you walk the dog here? <laughs> Why not? Anywho. So... Back to Porto. We were hanging around in Porto, which is a really cool city. We were able to walk down to the water, walk across the bridge, kind of have a good view of the city. Uh, What else did we do? We ate some kind of authentic Portuguese Portuguese cuisine. Um, Yeah, it was... It was kind of hard to get them real motivated to be roaming around a lot because they were both kind of exhausted from the flights over and still kind of jet lagged. But it was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. And then literally the next day we started walking. Yeah. And we didn't stop until we reached Santiago. We didn't have one one rest day. day. In one day. Yeah. We flew. 240 or 80K, I don't remember. I don't remember either. But it was, so it took us 11 days, right? 11 days, yeah. Yeah. 
and Cassie had to stop just shy. She was able to walk across the Spanish border with us. Yeah. Where was it that she stopped? Was it Valencia? Or... No, because that was before. That's still Portugal. Oh, yeah, that is. I think she was able to do the next day, so That's she right. left in Ribadeo or Redondola. I tend to get Spanish so cities no. mixed up that start mm-hmm. with the same letter. There's like Pontevedra and Ponte de Lima. Pontevedra. That's where she stopped. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but it was really cool, you know, being able to experience a Camino with somebody who, you know, I don't think that's normally how she travels, but she was just all for it. I don't think that's it. normally how most people travel. Yeah, I guess that's true. Is walking that no. much every day, day yeah. after day. Yeah, with your true. pack in one direction and not returning back to where you started. Yeah, that's true. Staying yeah. in one new place every that's night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not most people's itinerary. No. Yeah, so just having it be kind of not the norm for two people and seeing how the, how they were able to adapt to it was pretty awesome, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. And... Uh, even though they were pretty sore. Sore, hand, a couple blisters. Yeah. And my dad was having issues with, like, his knee and Chin you know, his for feet a bit, ankle. I feel like they still hung in there pretty, pretty all right. And, you know, ended up making it. Yeah. To where they wanted to go. Which was pretty cool. Yeah. And Better yeah. than I had anticipated. Yeah, because you really... I think I was more so just worried that I was hoping nothing bad was going to happen. Same, yeah. Because um, you never know. You never and, know. And people get injured. I get worried about myself. All the I'm time. like, Me I, too. I worry about my knees a lot because I've yeah. had my knees blown out a couple times on yeah. hikes. And it is fucking miserably painful. It is. And so I worry about myself at the start every time about that. And I'm yeah. really cautious... I worry about my ankles. My ankles that are my weak. my feet, too, yeah. Yeah, so... Feet I mean, and you knees. just... And, and when it's your loved ones, you really just don't want bad things to happen Yeah, to I mean, them, you can you know? warn them so many times, but they're really going to do what they're going to do. It's true. And, um, and you never know how, you know, how cautious they're being or if they're yeah. kind of being stubborn and just saying that Pushing they're not hurt as much. Pushing themselves too hard from the start yeah. or what. But, I mean, they hung in there and they yeah. did awesome, so it was... It was quite awesome. Yeah. I can't say awesome more. One Um, more time. (laughs) Awesome. But yeah, so now we're just in Santiago once again, chilling by our lonesomes. Um, My dad took off today. This morning, early. Early this morning to meet up. in Barcelona. With my mama, who's been having a hellish time with... With getting flight delays to Barcelona with flight delays in Seattle and then in London and so she's extended her travel time by almost eight hours Fun. which is shitty when it is in airports and airplanes yeah so I can we're totally just, sympathize yeah but we just heard that her plane landed and we're so grateful and so so excited to see she her. She should be there. Yay! But, yeah, we just wanted to uh, let y'all know what the fuck's been going on with us, because I yeah. kind of feel like we've just dropped off the face we've of the earth a little bit. We've been off the grid for a bit. <laughs> yeah. And I want to say that, really, for me, the reason why I wasn't super motivated to be like, oh, my God, let's record now, um was because we had that Camino crew. Well, there was a Camino crew on the north route that mm-hmm. we were having these last remaining, you know, time and days together. Yeah. And then it was the stressfulness of getting to Portugal and then yeah. starting off with this new crew, which was family and friends, mm-hmm. and making sure that they're fine and kind of putting all the focus to yeah. try to help them out and, yeah, for you know, sure get them on out yeah. on the right foot 
And it wasn't like those days were easy. I mean, some of them were definitely easier than the North Route, but yeah. they're still hard, you know. You're still exhausting yourself. You're still walking pretty long distances. You're dealing with cobblestone, which is hard on your joints. monster, yeah. Yeah, so it was it was just quite a lot. And, you know, I'd, I'd rather, for me, on the Camino, spend a lot of that time... With the with people the in people the moment. With the people in the moment. Yeah, well, I and mean, just, with like, Cassie, that. we only had, well, like, a week and a half, eight days? Yeah. I think it was, yeah, roughly eight days or so, so there wasn't a lot of time anyway. Yeah. You know, and so uh, really, you don't want to be like, hold on a minute, let me go journal for an hour or two, or yeah. hold on a sec, let me go record this podcast for an hour, and, you know, I it's haven't just, journaled in weeks. No, me neither. So literally, like, you want to just spend those moments that are precious to you with the people who you don't know when you're going to see them again. Yeah. Well, so. especially when, you know, like, they came all this way also. Totally. And, you know, put out the money to do this with you. Yeah. And, you know, left work, home, all mm-hmm. that shit. And yeah. So it's... You want to be like, okay, well, he's out. Uh, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't regret anything. But not one. That's smidge. why we've been MIA lately. Yeah. But um, yeah, with it being the parents meeting back up with them, it's probably going to be the same for the next week and a half or two. Um, we will be meeting with our good old buddy Krakobi. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to meet her She's again. She's a little excited herself. I think. Just teens. <laughs> And so this is our, like, oldest Kamiga. We met her on the first one. Our OG. Our OG Kamiga. And so, yeah, (laughs) we're stoked to meet up with her again in Paris. Um, It's only going to be for a few days, but we'll make it worthwhile. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, But, yeah, I think after that, we've got quite the set of travel plans ahead of us. That we we just just kind of brainstormed this morning. Today. Yeah. Roughly. We literally have but only... But I got fucking excitedly <laughs> excited. Yeah. <laughs> really? I don't know. Because with... Yeah. So traveling Europe can be expensive. Yes, it And can. it's relatively cheap on the Camino. Mm-hmm. But collectively, when it's been two months, you're like, all I've really done is the Camino. Not that that's a small thing, but no. it's like I've been... For the most part, in this general area of Europe, and collectively, I've spent a lot of money. Yeah. It's hard to escape, even it for is. how cheaply you can do it. Yeah. Um, so we were really trying to focus on somewhere to stay, as well as relax, that will also be easy on the wallet. Totes. So. And we found it. We but have a pretty good idea yet. of... Uh, <laughs> what we have in mind to do and we're pretty excited about it yeah so we'll talk to you guys about that once we are kind of on our own maybe again and we have time to record once more and i can feel my ass because i've been sitting on a stone slab for i don't know how long now and it's numb yeah between the thigh and the hips Mm -hmm. same um but yeah i want to say thank you so much you guys for listening i think we're approaching a thousand downloads which is fucking awesome that's incredible it's so cool i'm thrilled to hear that me too and so we hope you guys so much guys yeah if you like us um share with your friends just tell them tell them about it and uh yeah keep listening we'll have plenty more to come and uh, that will be for sure once we are kind of off doing the solo travel thing again. Um, I think we will be able to find some more time to do so and yeah. probably a lot more frequent than we have been. Yeah. So We should be able to find a bit more of a travel routine to dish sure. out some more. Yeah. Some and more episodes. There will be no lack of crazy experiences. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. But... All right. Well, we love you guys. And uh, again, just check out any forms of media if you want to, um, because they're all out there. We're under Trail of Beans on Facebook and Instagram. Or if you want to check out the podcast, 
You know where to find it. We out there. We out there. All right. We love you guys. Later. Adios. Adios. Buenas noches. Mis amigas. Chao, chao. Chao, chao. A buen provecho. <laughs>